Green Acres and how it came to be was actually a financial investment for my grandfather. And in 1923, he came out here one day. He was shooting Safety Last at the time with my grandmother, who was his leading lady. And he had plans, they were engaged, to be married at the end of the film. But he said, I'm not sure if I want to really live there. They had a beautiful house on Irving Avenue where all the stars did live in Hancock Park. He came around and he said, well, buy the property, put it in my corporation. In the springtime, after they'd been married, he came out here and there was the most beautiful foliage, the rolling hills, the trees, the flowers. He said, my God, this really reminds me of Nebraska in the springtime when I was a little boy. And this is like Green Acres. This is amazing. And that's actually how the name came to be, just one afternoon. And he was out here with my grandmother. Plus, my grandfather wanted to build a home. He was going to have a family in 19... 26, he started breaking ground here. My mother was with him, Gloria. She was two years old. Uh, she was born in 1924. So he knew that, you know, he was going into a, a stage to have a family. My grandmother had retired from films after Safety Last, and they put a lot of time and energy in building this home as a family home. It was not really conceived as a mansion, a show place. He really wanted a home. It was in a process of two and a half years that it took to build the estate. My grandmother wasn't too sure what to do with my mother, who was at that point three, two and a half, three years old. So they decided that the first structure on the property, they would build a dollhouse for my, my mom, uh, Gloria. And that was the first structure built on the property. There are so many wonderful memories, great birthday parties with great cakes and clowns and magicians. They'd always have like the big long tables and the birthday cakes in front of the dollhouse. This is probably my favorite place at Green Acres. Johnny Weissmiller would come over and uh, play down by the pool with the girls and their friends, Shirley Temple being one of them, Janie Withers, uh, Roddy McDowell would be up here. And you know, it's amazing, my grandfather was always really involved in the birthday parties with his own children, with my mother Gloria, and Peggy, and Harold Lloyd Jr. But he was exactly the same with me when I was here. He was always at the birthday parties, taking photographs and playing with us. He was always, you know, willing to participate, which was really wonderful. He was not somebody who was standoffish in any way. No, no, hey, now you say it, you don't know. Go on. Humpty huh? Dumpty <laughs> sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great ball. All the king's horses and all the king's men. <laughs> It is a very magical place for children. We have the stable, we have the swings, we have the wishing well, and the house, which is so great, it has running water and electricity, and it had its own telephone. It's a kid's fantasy, and it's lovely. So when you came to Green Acres for the first time, it was a very unpretentious setting. You came through just a very small entrance, little guard house at the, at the left-hand side. And uh, your first impression are these beautiful rolling lawns. And actually, the rolling lawns were nine-hole, full play, with water hazards and sand traps, golf course. And behind the rolling lawns, there was a beautiful moat that ran. And it went back to a moat house with a water wheel. And this was all just a kind of a facade or a, or a setup to think that you'd really gone to Europe or Italy. My grandfather actually had a very strong 
feeling, I guess it was more like a superstition, that he never drove around the fountain. He only drove to the right side of the fountain, and he never encircled the fountain, ever. But it was a large courtyard, which you can see, and it was a very unpretentious stairway that went up to a, a beautiful oak door. And when you opened up the oak door, you came into this magnificent entrance hall. It was a gold leaf dome ceiling that was 36 feet high. It had a hanging suspended oak staircase, which was the first one that was ever built on the West Coast. The home was always built around a center courtyard, which had a lovely fountain with a bronze of Hermes's Peter Pan, and that was done for my grandmother. The square footage of the house was almost a little amazing, because that was 32,000 square feet. Well, this is my grandmother's favorite garden, and it's the Rhodes Garden, and it has I think something like 30 variety of roses, and it has three lovely fountains. And the sweetest part was, and the most romantic part, was that my grandfather placed the rose garden here outside of the formal dining room so she could always look at it. This was really the place she'd come out and prune the roses and really tend to them herself. And it was very, um, it was really a place where I think a lot of her spirit was. The formal dining room at the estate had a magnificent fireplace in it with a beautiful coat of arms over the fireplace. And my grandmother had a real fun play in that dining room because the property line of Beverly Hills and Los Angeles ran through the dining room. And she would always sit in the Beverly Hills side and she'd push dad down to the other end of the table and have him sit in the Los Angeles side. But then when she'd have the parties, she'd pick her friends out to decide whether they are, do you want to sit in Beverly Hills or do you want to sit in LA? So it was um, always kind of a, an amusing story of who was going to be in what area in the dining room. We're just uh, strolling right now down this very elegant Italian garden called the Poplar Garden. And uh, it's surrounded by box hedges, beautiful roses. And the gazebo behind us was the scene of many Hollywood parties. And my grandparents used to put a orchestra in the gazebo and then put a dance floor here in the center of the Poplar Garden. And the opening party that they had here the party lasted for three days, and they found everybody roaming through the gardens three days later. Christmas at Green Acres was very special. The Christmas tale here at the house was he always put up a big Christmas tree, and he loved doing it, and he loved doing it for my grandmother. And in the beginning, he had, you know, maybe 500 ornaments, and then it went to 1,000 and then went to 2,000. And then fans would send him ornaments because the, the tree started getting a life of its own and it was being photographed for Life magazine and people were coming and doing photo shoots with the Christmas tree. And we'd have to arrange things in color order because he never had a red ornament beside another red ornament or a green ornament. It was all a color pattern to him. So it'd drive you crazy. And he'd sit with a stick and go, I think that ornament needs to be moved over here a little bit better, and maybe that arrangement should go over here for the light and the shape. It was a family event that everybody was in the process with the tree, even though we kid him about it, you know. And then one year he said, I just can't take the tree down. We're going to have to keep it up. And that went into two years, and then it got into a process. The last tree that was up, and I actually ended up having to take it down, I'd had it up when I had the house as a museum and running tours, it had been up six years. My mother, Gloria, was married to a man named William Vuosti. They were married here at the estate, actually in the formal garden out by the Italian fountains. And that was in 1950, September of 1950. And I was born at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica in July of 52. 
It was a very rough period for about the next year of her marriage, and my grandparents kind of stepped in, and very lucky for me, I couldn't have asked for more wonderful parents or parenting or having people that really loved me. My bedroom is right above where we're sitting here in this courtyard, and it's a little Juliet balcony there. And uh, my boyfriend, Richard Carell, he used to swing a rope up there and he'd climb up onto the balcony <laughs> and uh, sneak, into, in, sneak into the house. And I used to keep a big rope in my, in my, in my closet, and it was, um, it was fun. I think I was probably a very popular young teenager living here at this house. I had a lot of sleepovers because we had a lot of bedrooms and a lot of rooms, so that was great. And my grandparents were very cool about that. Richard Carell, he had a great band, but nobody wanted band practice at anybody's home, except we had the pool house and the pool pavilion, which was like, it was a ballroom. And we used to practice up there, and sometimes at night, and, you know, we'd play till one or two o'clock in the morning with all this music blasting. And literally, not only did no neighbors ever hear us, no one in the house ever heard us. We also noticed that the, the house was a, a place to, uh, was a great movie set. A lot of kids with show business backgrounds, we come up and use the, the Lloyd Estate to do some of our own projects. Anyway, we made this thing called the Swimming Party. And it was just nothing but a bunch of sight gags, and Mr. Lloyd would come down. And the thing that fascinated him the most about that is he came down one afternoon, and he looked across the grass, and I was, Dave was behind the camera, and I was jumping up in the air and flapping my arms and landing, and jumping up and landing, and jumping up and landing. And he, he said, what? What's this supposed to be? Sure enough, when that came on, it looked like I was flying around. And he said, you know, if I had had a camera that did that in my day, boy, would I have used that trick a lot. He said, this is fantastic, I'm learning something. And you know, Harold Lloyd saying, that's well, I'm learning something from us, you know, we're a bunch of kids. That was fantastic. But that's a good example of how enthusiastic he was about the stuff that we were doing too. But, you know, that was, that's the kind of thing that he, would, he was really excited about. Seeing that film like made him really excited. And he loved that we were using the house. After my grandfather passed away, number one, it, it, I was devastated. I was just turning 20, and I'd lived here all my life. The only people that were in the house here with me were the help, my longtime nanny, who'd actually raised the, the Lloyd children. This is tough. There we are. Mm. My grandfather put the house Green Acres into a foundation where he wanted people to come and tour it as a museum. So I actually took that project on and ran the house as a museum for three years. The city of Beverly Hills was never able, they never wanted us to be a museum because they thought it was in a residential area and that we couldn't handle the tourists. So it was a very hard decision, but we had to let the house go, the house was auctioned. But in the process of running the estate as a museum, and then when I lost it, I put into motion to make this Green Acres a national trust home. So it's a national heritage home, which cannot be torn down and has to be preserved. That was a saving grace. You know, I had such a wonderful upbringing and a wonderful time of life here that I always have that with me. It gave me so much happiness. I'll always feel that Green Acres is my home.